You wake up stiff and your joints ache. You're exhausted and you don't know why. Your doctor suspects it's lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, but which one is it and what if you get the wrong diagnosis? Vanessa was in this exact same situation. First, she was told that she has lupus and it was based on a positive antibody test, a positive blood test. But months later, her symptoms told a different story. It was rheumatoid arthritis all along. And by the time she did get the right diagnosis, there was already damage to her joints. If you've been told that you have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, I'll tell you exactly how doctors tell the difference, what key symptoms to look for, and why your diagnosis may change over time. And a quick trick to try to figure out what type of arthritis you might have just by how well you can flatten out your hand. Hi, I'm Dr. B, a rheumatologist and lifestyle medicine specialist. I've treated thousands of people with autoimmune disease over the years. So what's the reason that lupus and rheumatoid arthritis get mixed up with each other? Well, first of all, they can look pretty similar. They both can have joint pain and swelling. They can both have fatigue as well as morning stiffness, which is that stiff feeling in your joints when you get up in the morning. And they can actually both be associated with the same blood test positivity. For example, the ANA test, which is the anti-nuclear antibody test. Yes, it's supposed to be positive in lupus, but we often see it positive in rheumatoid arthritis as well, which kind of puts people on the wrong track and potentially the wrong diagnosis. Because about 30% of healthy people can have a positive ANA test. And it's also seen in so many different autoimmune diseases, which is part of the reason there was this confusion with Vanessa. Okay, so let's talk about some key differences. Clues for lupus. Usually it affects more than the joints. It can affect the skin, the kidneys, the heart, the brain, so many different areas. You can get rashes, the butterfly rash that a lot of people know about can happen, or even sun sensitivity when you go out in the sunshine and you can get rashes, but also you can get this severe fatigue when you're out there. Now, a lot of people can look flushed when they're out in the sun, but this is a different sensation. You can even get a thickened rash on your face, but oftentimes the effects of the sun can last from hours to days. Blood tests could show that positive ANA antibody, but also different cell lines could be abnormal, such as the white count could be potentially a little bit low, the platelets could be involved, you could have some anemia, or even kidney involvement. Symptoms can flare and disappear unpredictably without any rhyme or reason. You could be perfectly fine one day and feel extremely fatigued and tired the next because you're having a flare. Rheumatoid arthritis clues are a little bit different. Rheumatoid arthritis mostly affects the joints and it's symmetrical. If you have swelling on one wrist, oftentimes you might have a little bit on the other wrist. May not be the same amount, but it tends overall to be symmetrical. If it's in the fingers on these, maybe it's on the last two over here, maybe not the exact same ones, but still it's more symmetrical. I've even seen people get injured on one side with some swelling because of an injury and then they get it on the other side because of the rheumatoid arthritis. You can get a rash with rheumatoid arthritis. It's a vasculitis, but honestly, it's not that common anymore. It's fairly rare. I've been a rheumatologist for over a decade. And when I was first in training, we certainly saw much more of this, but over the years with all of the new medications that are out, we don't see the rashes as much. Although there are other organs that could be involved, such as the eyes, you can get scleritis, inflammation in the eyes or in the voice box, but mainly it's a joint condition and you can really see some joint damage over time, especially if the inflammation is not taken care of. Blood tests could be something like a rheumatoid factor or a CCP antibody, which can also be positive. Although sometimes we're not lucky and they're negative and you get something like a diagnosis of seronegative rheumatoid arthritis, which is also rheumatoid arthritis, but it just means that those blood tests weren't positive. It can be a little harder to pick up because of the fact that you don't have this very easy check mark blood test to tell you what you have. Vanessa didn't have the rashes or the kidney damage or the sun sensitivity that you often and see in lupus. What she did have was pain in her joints. And when I met her, you know, I was looking at the joints at how they looked. So when you took her hands, they were deviated. But when I tried to move them back, they didn't really go back very much. And that's important, right? Because in some people, if you go like this, it does kind of go back to normal. And in others, if it's deviated, it'll stay like this. Also, I put her hand on the surface and I tried to flatten it and it would not flatten out. In lupus, usually you can kind of push the joints back for the most part. But in rheumatoid arthritis, especially if you have erosive disease, you're not able to. So this is an important clue. 
Getting back to Vanessa, she had joint pain. It was in her hands, it was in her wrists, it was in her elbows, and it was mostly symmetrical. So it was a little confusing with that ANA blood test, you know, the features that she had of this young woman of reproductive age who now had joint pain, joint swelling, and she did have some stiffness in her joints. But then when I met her, we do the whole workup again, and I had checked for x-rays. And in those x-rays, she had erosions in her joints. Erosions are permanent bone damage inside of your joints. Think of a smooth road that you're going down that suddenly develops potholes in these little areas that you definitely don't want in that road. And once that damage happens, it's hard to reverse. In RA, the immune system attacks the lining of the joints, causing irreversible damage if you don't treat it. So this is a very key difference between lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Usually in lupus, yes, you can have joint pain, you can have joint swelling, but you don't usually have erosions, this permanent damage. But in rheumatoid arthritis, you can certainly have that. And it is irreversible, which is always what we're trying to kind of fight against. So when people say, I can handle the pain, I can handle the stiffness, I can handle the swelling, but the problem is once you get this irreversible damage to your bones, we can't do anything about that. And it may not bother you now, but it could be a really big problem for you in the future. Seeing these erosions on Vanessa's x-rays, I checked her blood tests again. And to be honest, even if they were negative for anything, I can see that she has permanent damage and needs to be treated accordingly. But in her case, actually her CCP antibodies had now become positive, definitely leaning more towards a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. So let's talk about why your diagnosis might change. This is something I think everyone who has an autoimmune disease should know. If you've ever been to a rheumatologist or have discussed any rheumatic condition, you can see that there's a lot of vagueness in this field. Because while we love checking blood markers, they're not always positive. They may become positive later on, or they may be leading us on a wild goose chase. As I had pointed out before, an ANA test, which a lot of people come to see us for, is positive 30% of the time in a healthy population. So it doesn't mean that you have autoimmune disease, but it does mean that you should maybe look for one, or at least see if there are any other symptoms symptoms that are related. Oftentimes people may come in for an ANA and wonder if they have lupus and we end up diagnosing them with a completely different condition because it was like a red herring for the case. And yet there was other things going on because there's so many other conditions that are associated with it besides lupus. Sometimes when you have rheumatoid arthritis, the antibodies, the blood markers may not be positive initially, but it's not that you should be checking them every few months because it probably won't make a difference. But if you check them at baseline when symptoms start, and maybe if you check again a year or a year and a half later, you may discover that there's a change in the antibody status and it's now positive. But even if it's not, really what you have to treat is symptoms and organs. We don't want damage to the organs. So we go ahead and treat sometimes. And it's fine to do that. And it's also fine to pull back when we think that this may not be the right diagnosis because such is the world of autoimmune disease. A diagnosis isn't always final. Blood tests aren't always exact, which is why it's so important to reassess symptoms over time. As long as you're always thinking, is this correct? Am I being appropriately treated? Am I feeling better? Then you'll go much further. Getting back to Vanessa for a second, can you have both rheumatoid arthritis and lupus? Actually you can, but it is pretty rare. I would say even in our clinic, we don't have too many people that have that shared diagnosis. And those people have features of both, but most people will have one or the other. So oftentimes when you see a rheumatologist, they want all these follow-up appointments. And this is one of the reasons for it because symptoms can change. Your pain can worsen, new symptoms can happen. And if the treatment isn't working, it's time to reassess. So if you're struggling with symptoms and you think you could have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, here's what you should do. First, make an appointment to see your doctor. Usually most people start with primary care and they can check the blood test and they can kind of see if the patterns may fit into place. Number two, track your symptoms because these are all the questions that rheumatologists will ask. You know, what time of day is it worse? Do you have stiffness associated with it? Do medications help it feel better? Does exercise help it feel better? What makes it worse? Ask for the right test for auto autoimmune disease, especially if you have a strong family history or anything else that could clue you in, like the symptoms that we talked about. Vanessa eventually did get the right diagnosis and started treatment for her rheumatoid arthritis and did much, much better. But if she had waited longer, it would have led to permanent disability because she's clearly in that boat where she is getting erosions. Not everybody gets that permanent damage, but some people do. So she definitely needed more aggressive treatment. Now I want to hear from you. Were you ever tested for lupus or rheumatoid arthritis? Was there ever a question of the correct diagnosis? What was your experience like? Drop a comment. And if this video helped you, share it with someone else you think that could also benefit. I'm Dr. B from Plant Forward MD. I'll see you next time for more tips on your health.